Hello everyone, welcome back to Dark House Films, the show dedicated to teach you how to do the best visual effects of modern films. I want to start today's show by apologizing for two things. Number one, the audio. Unfortunately, I don't have a very good microphone, and I have been trying to record this with the one built in in my camera. However, I'll try to get a better microphone soon, that way I can provide you guys with the quality of audio that you deserve. And number two, I wanted this tutorial to be amazing. Unfortunately, I couldn't find someone to help me create some footage, and I had to use a still image. And also, I feel the effect did not reach the level that I personally wanted to without using third-party plugins, or 3D softwares, or the zero budget that I had. With that being said, I promise you guys a second tutorial on this effect with more advanced techniques and a 10 times better outcome. So I want you guys to take this tutorial as a very simple example of how you can create a similar effect and also show you a few tips and tricks. So, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in After Effects one more time. Here I already have my two images that I will be combining. Um, in my case, I'm using still images. And uh, one has already been keyed out. So we basically need to adjust both of these images so they can be around the same position. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my puppet tool and pretty much position it wherever I want to. Um, now, have in mind, the face is one of the most important features. So what I did was I just selected my puppet tool. I applied two pinpoints on the eyes and then I adjusted them accordingly so they can uh, be on the same position. And then I just started warping the, the rest of the body. So it can, uh, so it can fit, you know, basically in the same position. Um, that's that's the point of this uh, transformation to be from one body to another. So once you already have your body on the same position or okay once that's done what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to press control Y to create a new layer and then I'm going to grab uh, my masking tool and then just create some sort of shape yeah, that's really up to you whatever shape you guys want to want to choose and then just duplicate it change the layer setting to a black color uh, bring the opacity down to around 50 or so then the, the mask expansion, bring it down, I would say, under uh, 55 pixels or so, just so it can fit your needs. We are basically just getting some sort of uh, shade inside of the layers. So what I did was I just duplicated the layer one more time and then I sampled uh, the second skin that it's going to be transforming to. So then uh, I, I select my anchor point position tool and I, I position the anchor point right at the bottom of the, of the shape. Next thing I do is I create a new shape, a very small shape, and set a few keyframes, copy and paste it that way the, the shape of the, of the mask just changes uh, within those certain frames. And then you can just adjust it accordingly. So in order for this effect, uh, you gotta understand the effect, uh, or you gotta understand what you guys are trying to accomplish so you guys can get there. Uh, in my case, what I feel this effect is, is a uh, change of skin. That's uh, that's what I believe the skin is. It's and it, So what I want to do is pretty much simulate that the skin is growing or creating some sort of shape outside of the body and then it grows back inside it, but in, in a different shape, I'm sorry, in a different color. So what I did was I sampled the color of one skin, I animated the shape, and then I created, I transformed it into a 3D layer. So then I take my 3D layer and then I start keyframing my position on the rotations. So I selected my X rotation 
I rotate it slightly on the Y, on the Y position, and then also I keyframe my X rotation. That way it grows down. It, uh, it rotates up and then it shrinks back inside. So basically it's a, it's a, a, uh, a growth and then the, um, the skin goes back into the body. That's what, what I aim for. I've been counting down the days and then I get a movement like this. So then after I select all these layers, I duplicate them. I select the first three, I pre-compose them and I name them. Next thing, the duplicates, I change the colors. I go ahead and sample the colors one more time. I select one color, in this case one shirt. I went to the second layer, sample the second shirt. And then I duplicate it one more time. And then I do the same thing for the pants. So basically here what we're doing is we're trying to get every color that the, the subjects have. Skin, shirt, pants. You guys can go ahead and do the hair, the hair as well, but it all depends what you guys want to go for. So next thing is is to kind of create that look of um, skin change. So. This can't be accomplished just with one layer. So we're gonna position it somewhere where we are, wherever you guys want. And basically, we're just, we're just gonna create a line of skins growing, I guess. So I just duplicated the layer and then I just started positioning them up. I, I would re highly recommend changing the scale on them that way it doesn't look too repetitive and also you get like a more organic sort of look i was trying to be as fast as, as i could on this on this on this example i had already done it and i did it completely different so i couldn't spend much time on this anymore But uh, you know, once you change the uh, the time frame, the timing on these layers as well, you start getting something like this. And then go ahead and pre-compose that, and you can name it skin. <laughs> and then just do the same thing for the rest of the layers. So here's where your creativity comes in, and just duplicate the layers. You know, uh, find as many as you need. And then this is the part where we're gonna start using those pre-comps. So I created a mask for my first subject, and uh, this mask was just positioned on the right arm. I animated the mask to basically go from the sleeve down, and then I start positioning these, this element we created. I went ahead and I flipped it, that way instead of going up it goes down. And you can also change the timing on that. Just just change the time on the on the element. If you want to make it faster, if you want to make it slower, I would suggest changing the time on a few, making a few faster, making a few slower. That way you don't have the same look. Uh, on them and then basically just start positioning them where you guys feel you will need to if there's movement on your subject you will have to add a bunch of keyframes to them so they can start following the, the subject but basically it's just duplicating positioning duplicating flipping positioning duplicating positioning and then basically just timing them so they can follow the mask animation
then we get this this sort of movement. It just depends how what look are you guys going for. And once you have all those elements, you can pre-compose them. That way you have, uh, I named it right hand. That way I can control all those elements with uh, from one layer only. And then I started doing the same thing for my left hand. Again, the mask and applying a bunch of different elements, duplicating, adjusting, transforming, flipping, scaling up, scaling down, rotating. I feel this this effect can be very powerful, um, however it's very time consuming since we are kind of replacing this element with a, uh, with a 3D software I guess, but if done right it can look very very good. I feel I overdid it here instead of changing the, the sizes on some of these elements to be larger and bigger I just added a bunch of them and I feel I personally overdid it um, but hopefully on my next tutorial for this effect that I can come up with something better than this something that takes less time my masks are sort of messed up and that's because I, I didn't pre-compose the subject before adding the masks and we have the and we have the puppet tool there so it kind of creates this weird warp onto it and the masks read the the masks read the layer on a weird way so here what i did from the transformation of the ma of the shirt since it's a white to white uh, what I did was I duplicated the main subject, I created a mask around the shirt, and I simply added a turbulent displacement. I added a few keyframes. On the first frame, it was uh, the amount was down to zero. And then I set up a keyframe to 140 or so. And also, my first keyframe is going to be at... Uh, I set a few keyframes for the opacity. First frame is at 100, and then we're... Uh, set up a keyframe for wherever you guys want your transformation to hit and bring the opacity down to zero that way you get some weird warp transform on the shirt and then just to start applying the, the same elements we created but on the white colors again i feel like i overdid this here but it's really up to you it's really your um it's really your taste on this uh, effect I personally feel that it would have been it would have looked a lot better if uh, we had a few scales, uh, larger scales. And then here, what you need is a lot of duplicates, changing, transforming, scaling down, scaling up, rotating, same process over and over again. And I did the same thing for the face. I added, I duplicated my main subject, I added a turbulent displacement, added a few keyframes to the amount, and uh, added a keyframe on the first frame for the opacity to 100, then I brought it down um, within the transformation, depending, and then I brought it down a few, a few frames after. Uh, as for the eyes, we all know the Mystique has yellow eyes. So what I did was I press Ctrl Y to create a new layer, a, a yellow layer, uh, and then I just masked around the eyes. Now since the eyes also change shape, 
you're gonna want to go to this uh, and then I feather it out about 10 pixels but since the eyes also change shape you're gonna want to go to the, the first frame and set up a keyframe for the, the shape of the eyes and then to where the transformation work uh, goes you change the, the transformation and then you change the shape so it can follow the, the warp on it and then you can duplicate that layer and add a tint effect in this case I added a purplish color which is the mystique color I guess and then bring your mask expansions to under 20 or so and then add a few keyframes that way it starts expanding within the time and then and then you can change the layer the blending mode on the layer to a multiply that way it looks a lot better and then here's basically where we just animate our, the, the shapes of our eyes so you can start following the eyes within the transformation and we finally get uh, a shape shifting like this so final step is so it can look better we pre-compose all the elements and we add another puppet pinpoints and we start keyframing these and then that way there you get movement during the transition and it doesn't look so static okay so that's it for today's tutorial i hope you guys liked it and maybe learned a few tips